Hello, this is Slaga from Low Action Gamers, and I'm here to bring you a video on Project Zomboid, so let's get right into it. In this video, I will walk you through the process to making an amazing base. This will also be an in-depth guide to everything related to carpentry in Project Zomboid. First thing you want to do is to find a suitable location. Hopefully this will be near water, with a whole bunch of trees around. You're going to need them. Then you're going to have to find and scavenge a few specific items before you start building. Your best bet is to find a local hardware store to find many of the items that you need there. If not, the buildings indicated by a black color would be your next best bet. The first thing you're going to need is a hammer. If your forging skill is high enough, you can make one, but they do not last very long. The next thing you're going to need is a whole lot of nails. Even a small building could take up to 400 nails to build. The third item you are going to need is a saw. Self-explanatory, it's for all the planks you're going to create. Lastly, the most important thing is an axe. A fire axe, a wood axe, a hand axe, anything that can go better. The crafted one is not going to last very long, and the ones that you can find are going to be much better in the long run. You can always repair them with wood glue or duct tape. Note that the amount of time that any of these items will last in your inventory is based proportional to your maintenance stat. Now that you have the necessary items, you're going to start by cutting down trees. There's a couple of tips when you go around doing this. You will get exhausted quickly, especially if you do not have a very high fitness. The best way to save yourself time in this is after you cut down a tree, to sit down on a pile of logs, and then saw those logs into planks. Even though it won't show it, while sitting down, it is still giving you time of rest, even though you're sawing planks. This works the same way when you're picking them up. Once you collect a decent amount of materials, it's time to level up your carpentry skill. The quickest and easiest way to do this is to create wooden paths through the woods. Cut down a tree, saw up the logs, and build wooden floors all around it. This way, you won't have to waste time picking up the planks. You can build and saw while sitting so you won't get exhausted, and this will become a path through the woods where there won't be any trees growing in the way. I can tell you this much, the biggest thing that destroys a lot of vehicles is little saplings that you can't see. Now that you have a bit of a carpentry skill, it's time to lay out the design of your base. And there's a few things that you have to keep in mind while doing this though. When you set up a generator, it can only power and work within a limited range. I want to say it's around 30 to 40 tiles away from placement. So it's not a big one, but it's not too small either. Next, any water furniture that you may place must be on outside walls. So sinks, tubs, washers, toilets, any of those have to be located on an outside wall for them to work correctly. After you kind of figure out a way to go, lay out your floor plan, build your doorways and wall frames as you see fit, and see how you want to design your rooms. Do not fully build them unless you're level 7, because this will save you both materials and time in the long run. Even if you don't have fully built walls, they will still indicate and act as a windbreak once you have a roof over them. Once the walls are placed, you should try to get yourself to level 6 because that's the next step in this. You will need to build stairs. At carpentry level 6, you will be able to build these stairs before 15 planks and 15 nails. You want to construct these stairs on the outside of your building leading up towards where you want the second floor to be. Now, you don't want your stairs on the inside because it's impossible to close off the roof of this. So when winter hits, you're not going to be able to seal in all the heat. Note that your stairs can only face east and south, and once it's in place, you will not be able to move it or disassemble it you can only destroy it so make sure you put it where you need to go after it's constructed you just head up the stairs and you'll have one floor platform just build another floor above your house and you will have yourself your roof hopefully by the time you finish your roof you'll have carpentry 7 so you'll be able to head back downstairs and finish off your walls additionally on the roof aspect of things the flooring doesn't need supports so you can make sky bridges if you so choose now it is time to hunt down the rest of the items that you need. First, you'll need a crowbar. Next, a sharp knife, whether that be kitchen, butter, scissors, or a hunting knife. A pipe wrench, a regular wrench, and supply yourself with garbage bags. You're gonna need eight per water utility within the household. So eight for a toilet, eight for a sink, eight for a washer, eight for a tub. Friends will make this task significantly easier as you are vulnerable to zombies as you're disassembling, and disassembling is rather noisy, so it will draw their attention. What you're gonna do is you're gonna head into your nearest town and find things that you like. 
You're going to disassemble all the doors that you see because you'll get multiple hinges and knobs from each one. You want to collect two hinges and one knob per door within the household. On the left hand side of your screen you're going to see a little cabinet image. This will allow you to pick up any items in game, whether that's flooring, furniture, or wall objects. All items are heavy, so make sure you have a group of people or a vehicle to carry everything back. Then you're going to try to attempt to take out the windows. You're going to need the crowbar for this, and be careful when trying to take out windows because there is a high chance of you breaking them. So make sure you have quite a few lined up for you to try to attempt to take. After you grab yourself your windows and doors, you're going to head back to base, get your place all sealed up, and then you're going to immediately head back out to get yourself your plumbing equipment. Let's try and do the plumbing. You're going to take out the pipe wrench and the regular wrench, and you're going to go around town and try to grab all those sinks. Even at carpentry level 10, it still has a 25% chance to break, unless you pick the plumber starting, then it's less than that. But still, a 25% is a hefty amount. Once you head back to base to properly install a sink, you're going to build a cabinet or grab one from in town and bring that back with you. Set it up, and then you'll set the sink in that cabinet. It works for any cabinet regardless of what design it is even the bar cabinets that you make after that is done what you're going to do is for each water utility you're going to build a rain collector has to be the square one with the trash bag visual in it above and on the outside wall if you do this correctly when you head inside and you go to that furniture it will say to plumb for all items in the household the plumbing must be done in this way. The best part about this is once everything has plumbing to it, regardless of where you pull the water from, it is always clean water. Also realize that it is a finite amount. The amount of water in each of these objects is proportional to the amount of water on the roof rain collector. Once your plumbing is done, it is time to light up the place. To do this part, you must either have found a generator magazine or have started as an electrician. You'll also need a level 3 electrical skill to be able to get yourself a stove. Only level 1 is needed for lights. If you have the required knowledge, go get yourself a generator from either a storage warehouse or a backyard shed. If you have that all set, you're going to right click on the generator regardless of where you place it and hit the connect button. This will automatically make all electronic units run off that generator. Keep in mind that the generator will use more fuel proportional to the amount of power drawn. Now to make sure that you have your place lit up, you're going to head out and just like you did with the windows, you're going to use that left cabinet button. You're going to pick up the lights and you need a screwdriver to make this happen. All lights are extremely heavy, so make sure you have a car or other people to carry all of it back. Now that you have power and water in your base, it's time to make it pretty. Sure, crates hold a bunch of items, but who wants to live in a warehouse? Head to your hardware store and grab yourself a bucket, bags of plaster, paint colors that you like, and a paintbrush. Fill the buckets with water, and with a bag of plaster nearby, right-click on the water bucket and choose Make a Bucket of Plaster. Now you can plaster 10 walls per bucket on the south and east facing sides. Once all the walls are plastered, take your chosen color and paint. And again, this is in 10 wall increments. For the type of flooring and furniture that you like, you gotta make sure that you have that wooden floors placed down and you're gonna head into town. You're gonna find any kind of floors that you like and usually with either a crowbar for tile or a sharp knife for carpet, you then pick it up like you would any other object in the world. And with that, you now have a super nice looking amazing place with lots of lights, tons of storage, water, and class. So congratulations, Builder. You have done all that you need for a base. Now enjoy the safe haven away from the apocalypse, and even if you die, your base will forever be here. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I know it was quite a lengthy video, but I think it was well worth it. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.